I welcome you to St. John's United Church as we worship together through this online means. I hope this helps you in your life as you listen to the, the message, as you listen to the, the hymns and the music that we have. I know it's never the same as being in worship, but I hope that in some ways we can make it a, always a little bit more like worshiping together. And one of the things I'm going to do as part of the background, and tell me whether this works, I'm always open to suggestions. You can send me email. If you look up my number online, you can give me a call if you like. Uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing, though, is having the background of some of the stained glass windows we have at St. John's is just part of the background. So, for example, this week, it's the if you were facing the pulpit, it would be right behind me, the stained glass window of, of Jesus and, and people coming to him to gather. And then I'll be going through and using different ones so that perhaps, I hope this will help a little bit to, to make it feel a little bit more like you're at the church building as we worship. Again, I hope this helps you in your life. May you know the peace of Christ in your life. All the earth shall bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever, Amen. in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Psalm chapter 36, verses 5 
to 10. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God! All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright of heart. God and Father of all, we praise you that all things which come to us are yours. We are thankful that you provide for us financially, you provide for us spiritually, and you provide for us in so many other ways. We cannot begin to list the ways that you bless us. We know you don't need anything material from us, but you desire our reverence. And so, blessed Lord, we give you our tithes and offerings now, but more importantly, we give you our love and our esteem. Amen. Isaiah chapter 62 and verses 1 to 5. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you, And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 1 to 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, 
and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. The Holy Gospel of John, chapter 2, and verses 1 to 11. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I recently had a very thought-provoking conversation over the phone. The topic was, of course, COVID. We don't seem to talk about a lot of other things lately. But more specifically, it was about how people are behaving during this pandemic. How people are treating one another in this often very stressful situation. The person I was discussing this topic with said that they are not considering anything anyone does during this pandemic 
as an indicator of who that person really is. In other words, they think that this stressful time and how people react shouldn't be held against those people, that that is not who they really are. I was, and am, diametrically opposed on that opinion. I think the complete opposite. I believe that this stressful time often reveals our true nature. I agree with the person that we shouldn't hold against people because we are to forgive as Christians. But I think how people react in stressful situations is an indicator of who they really are, or at least a part of them. And I don't think this is just about other people. Unfortunately, I think it reveals my own inner problems because I have not acted in the best manner at times during this pandemic. In the past, I had a a depressive episode which was diagnosed by a doctor. I have talked about this before. My, My depression was due to circumstances. There's actually a medical term for it, but I don't remember what that is. And not all depression is caused by circumstances. It may be caused due to chemical imbalances or or other matters. However, for me, at at the time, I was overwhelmed by the amount of problems I faced. I, I couldn't make decisions. I lost all joy in anything I did. And this was all before COVID. But recently, I and others close to me saw this starting again. I was going into a depressive state and Once again, it was, I recognized, because of all that was happening around me, to me, and to others. I had some deep-seated anger, and it started to come out. I started losing the joy of life. I'm telling you this because I needed to acknowledge my inner issues, and that they are a part of who I am. I may not, I may not want to be like that, but if I deny that that is, that that is me, I may never resolve the issue, And any time I'm overwhelmed in the future, I may just go down that same path again. And I don't want that. I need to see myself as part of the problem so that I can act on it and become the person I want to be and the person I believe that God wants me to be. And in fact, because I was open to seeing my own inner faults, or at least some of them, I think I still probably have others, I was able to deal with them much quicker And that depressive state not only didn't get worse, it has actually lessened a lot to where now, in a reasonably short time, I think it is gone. This is why I believe that these stressful stressful situations can be an opportunity for us to deal with those hidden and, and deep issues that nearly every one of us has, so that we can become the people of joy we were intended to be. I recently read in the Globe and Mail an article whose author is very angry about our most recent shutdowns in Ontario due to COVID. I do get it. I sympathize. There are some legitimate questions of whether we have learned very much in this two-year period. We had the opportunity to learn. Did we squander it? But even more importantly, what about us personally? There was an opportunity for some of us to deal with our deep-seated history because it may have been revealed in this stressful period. Did we squander the opportunity to become better people? Here is what the writer of the article wrote. Each new but old restriction is infuriating on its own. As a parent, for starters, I'm absolutely livid. And as a human being who requires some, any, simple cultural pleasures to make this life worth living, I'm depressed, confused, anxious, distressed, exhausted, and Beale-level furious. I don't intend to be mean to a person who is obviously having a very difficult time, but I do have to ask this question. Is this really how we find ultimate joy? Through simple cultural pleasures? Is that really what makes this life worth living? I would suggest there is another way, a a better way, a a way to find joy even in the midst of sorrow, to find joy even in the midst of stress. And the key to this door of joy, if I can call it that, is found in the psalm reading for today. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. With whom is this fountain of life? With God. It is in God's light that we see light. Now, this doesn't make sense, and how could it for those who either don't believe there is a creator, or for those who do believe there is a God, but kind of a far-off God who's not involved in the world, or who doesn't care about you, doesn't care about me. 
But this makes such perfect sense. If we have a creator who is involved personally with his creation and with those who he has made in his image, you and me. It makes sense if God is involved in our training, just like parents are involved in the raising of their children. Our Heavenly Father is training us to be the people we were intended to be, to be God-like. Not God, but God-like. The traditional Christian term for this is theosis or deification. That is who we are intended to be. Awesome, isn't it? Without the sun or, or some source of light, we cannot see. We need light, a source of light, to see light. That's how our eyes work. In a similar way, to see spiritual light, to see the path to travel, we need the light of God to enlighten us. So I'd make another suggestion here, that when God's light shines in us, then we can see every moment as a test or opportunity, a test to become the person we we want to be, that God wants us to be, not only when things are going well, but when things are going badly. But how can I become this person, or know I have become this person, unless I have an opportunity to test myself or to be tested? Courage has always been considered one of the greatest human virtues, not only by Christianity, but by many other faiths and philosophers. Aristotle was one of many philosophers who considered courage to be one of the greatest virtues of humanity. But how can you know you have courage, or lack it, or get better at it, unless you are faced with a situation that demands courage? That was really the view of Aristotle. We need to be faced with situations that test or reveal our courage or or offer us the opportunity to practice our courage. And it is why, unlike the view of the person I was discussing this with, I believe these stressful situations reveal who we truly are at the moment, but also, and maybe more importantly, how we may become the person we were meant to be. Courage isn't revealed when the going is good. Courage is revealed when bravery is required. Integrity, another virtue, isn't revealed when the going is good. It is revealed when the temptation is not to have integrity. I hope this current Omicron variant is COVID's last gasp, as I have heard it called. But what if it isn't? What if this continues another year? Or two? Or three? We should hope and pray it ends soon. But can we find joy and courage if it continues on? Can we allow the light of God to light our paths and find the true meaning of life and joy in him who has the fountain of life in his possession? What comes out if you squeeze a tube of toothpaste? Toothpaste. Metaphorically, what comes out of us when we are squeezed? And we have been squeezed as individuals and as a society. What has come out of us? There has been a lot of good. But there has also been a lot that isn't so good. Sometimes we haven't been in in this all together. People have lost friendships and family because of this pandemic. Unfortunately, it has revealed a lot of darkness in this world and in myself, if I am being frank. But I'm choosing not to go down that path any longer. I know where it leads. I don't want to take that road. I want to take a different road. It's not the easy road. Often it is much more difficult because it requires me dealing with parts of me I would rather not acknowledge. But I shouldn't be surprised by this reality, that life isn't easy. Jesus said it long ago. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Which path will you take? Peace be with you. Thank you.
God, you spoke your word and revealed your good news in Jesus, the Christ. Fill all creation with that word again, so that by proclaiming your joyful promises to all nations and singing of your glorious hope to all peoples, we may become one living body, your incarnate presence on the earth. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.